Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting this Tomahawk Destroid from Robotech RPG Tactics. Okay, as you can see I've already done the base. Uh, what I've done, well not completely, but what I've done is I've uh, mounted the gravel on it and I've already dry brushed it. Uh, you could see that in the previous video. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the tomahawk okay now there's I've, I've, I've been thinking about this about how to present this to you and uh, there's a couple of things you need to think about why are you painting your figure uh, like what what level of detail do you need so are you painting it for a museum piece that's going to go on display uh, for everyone to see you know at a museum no. Are you painting it for a miniature painting competition? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Are you painting it because you want to have a beautiful looking model on the table when you're playing? Sure. Are you painting just one model because you're going to be, because it's like a role playing game and you only have one model and that represents you? Or do you have a whole army of figures that you have to paint? And this is just going to be one of the guys on the table that people don't even pay attention to very well. Yes. Okay? Because in this, in this game, you have units of miniatures and uh, you have a number of them. So, the painting that I'm going to be doing is basically... I'm not going to say it... Well, I'm going to say it, but... You can view it out how you want, but speed painting. Basically, you're going to paint this, and it's going to look really good in a short amount of time. You're not going to dedicate a whole lot of effort into this model, unless you want to. And then, uh, I have a tendency to put more effort into my models because I'm just such a, uh, a stickler. I like to keep my models looking good and you know what you can when you're done and you're playing it's a couple of months later you want to go back in and improve the model you'll be able to do that okay so that's the technique we're going to be using and I call it printing in the negative uh, what that basically means is uh, you've here's kind of like a summary and then I'll demonstrate it you have a black primed figure and a lot of miniature painters will paint a figure like all white, let's just say. And then they would go back in and they would put a black line using either a black ink pen or a very fine tip black paintbrush and they would paint or they would use ink and they would fill in the cracks and crevices that they wanted to have shadow or depth. Well, that's an extra step. Why are you bothering to do that? Okay, I mean, it, it's, it's nice, and it looks good, and I've done it for years, but I've kind of stumbled upon a new technique. And this technique is, it's already primed black. Leave the black in the cracks and paint around it. Paint up to the crack, but not in the crack. And that way, you automatically get the line. You don't have to go back in a second time and add a line. Okay, so that, I consider that painting in the negative, because you're leaving, you're, you're not filling every single crack. Uh, now, the next step, okay, that's the summer. You have to decide what brushes are going to be useful for you. Uh, there is a saying out there that says, use a brush that... Wait, 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 how's the saying going? It says... Use a brush that will be able to apply the amount of paint that you want it to apply. Sounds logical, right? So if you have like this big, huge open area and you need to paint it, get a big, huge household paintbrush. If you've got this really small little pinpoint, then use a 3.0 or a 5.0 brush that's going to be able to get down into uh, the cracks and crevices that you're looking to get into. So. 
yeah, so you need to have multiple brushes. If it's a large area, don't try to paint the whole large area with just this little itty bitty brush. It'll take you forever. And don't try to paint this little crack or a, a space between two lines with this household brush. You'll ruin it. So you got to get the appropriate brush for the appropriate situation. So what I did was I kind of glanced over this figure and I tried to figure out like what kind of brushes I was going to use. Well, I'm going to probably use four. I might even use more than this. But I have a fairly large brush here. It's, uh, it's so old that the little numbering is worn off. But if I was to have to guess, I would say it's an O. And then... I've got a Citadel, what they call a Citadel starter brush, and it's probably going to be my primary brush to paint stuff on here. And then I've got these two other brushes from Royal Royal Round. One's a 3-0, and the other one is probably a 4 or a 5-0. And those are my brushes. Okay. So you got your brush, you got your model set out of the side, you got your brushes set out the side. Remember you're going to need something like a paper towel to dry your brushes off between colors or between applications. You're going to need water to wash your brushes off. You're going to need an applicator to mix your paint because your paint's not always going to be the perfect consistency that you want it to be. You might have to add water. And I use a little water squirt bottle right here. Uh, you have, you have your palette, your paint palette. Now, as you can see, I've completely covered my paint palette in aluminum foil. Okay, and these uh, reservoirs right here, I just press the aluminum foil down so that it matches up with the reservoir. As you can see, I've already used a little bit of the paint palette. There is a torn, uh, a torn reservoir. Guess what? I just will skip it. I just won't use that spot. And I got two of them out just, to, you know, for ease of doing a whole bunch of models at the same time. Okay, uh, another thing. You want to do more than one model at the same time. You don't want to just paint one model and when it's done, move on to the next model. No. What I like to do is stay with a color. So if I'm going to use this color, which I am, if I'm going to use this color, I'm going to paint every model that needs this color on it with this color. And then I'll go to my next color and then I'll paint whatever model I need that has that color. Okay. Let me see. Have I touched everything? Colors, the model. Yeah, you need to review the model. Uh, find out exactly what colors you want to put on it. And then I like to pull those colors out and have them ready so that when I'm going through my model painting process, I don't have to later go and dig for these colors. Uh, there's a great couple of pages on the back of this rule book. This is Robotech RPG Tactics, and if you're painting Robotech RPG models, you can get a lot of good color ideas, paint schemes, and if you're not familiar with like different units in the Robotech universe, this will help you out. Okay. We are painting this model right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and they give you all the color codes that you could use. I, I don't know if those are Tamiya or what brand. Uh, there's probably somewhere that says what brand. Oh, well, I couldn't find it. I looked through, the, I looked through it trying to find it. Uh, I thought there was an explanation of like what manufacturer those color codes come from. It might be Tamiya because they kind of look like Tamiya codes. But I don't think it was. I think it was like DreamPod 9. No. Um, like P5. Might have been P5. Might have been. I don't think it was Citadel. Uh, but who knows. So, but either way, my point is. Sorry, I'm jumping around. My point is. This is the model, this is the color code or color pattern that we're going to be painting today. But, these patterns, I don't, um, I have a philosophy. Uh, and this, this is not really, you know, this is, this is an anime style game, right? So, so everything you see in the cartoon is 
for color. Basically, you see the specific types of colors that bring out a cartoon. They're animated. It's a... It's... First of all, it's an older cartoon, so they didn't have a lot of options like they do today. You know how the cartoons today look realistic or they're digitalized. Where well, this was like all hand-drawn stuff and the coloring was all done by hand. Okay, so those colors, because they're animated cartoon colors, they're more on the lines of the core colors and they're not subtle colors. And I think, and I want my game to have subtle color differences. And I want them to have, I want them to look realistic. I don't want them to look like a cartoon, even if it is anime. So what I've done was, I kind of looked at what the idea was for each of the color codes for the models, and I've come up with my own paint schemes. Which is good. It makes my army unique, for one thing. And it makes them more, look more realistic, uh, I'm hoping. And uh, it, it makes them look less cartoony. Because uh, so, cartoony is a good effect on a model, but not, not for me. Okay, well, I've wasted enough time on talking about that. So what I've done was, uh, I'm, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to use this P3 formula, Ruxan... Ruxan? Okay, rucksack tan, or this folk art teddy bear tan, and then the teddy bear tan and the rucksack tan are are very close in pigment, right? But this one's just a little bit lighter, and I think I am going to go with the light one. So let's shake this, shake, 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 shake it up, right? And that's going to go on 99% of that model. The cracks and crevices are not going to have it. Again, ensure there is a hole. There it is, damn. And understand that it's probably dried out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of drops. Come on, teddy bear. Okay, I might need to have to go get another bottle of teddy bear. Okay, I got two drops. I'm going to add a couple of... I don't really probably don't even need to add any water, but I'm going to add... Thoroughly stirring the water and the paint. Going with my biggest brush. Because I'm going to be painting the biggest areas on the model. Now, you only need to cover up just a very small portion of the paintbrush. I don't even know if you noticed that. About two millimeters with paint. Not crazy amounts of paint. You don't need to go quick. Okay, now that we're zoomed in, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of paint on my brush. Very little. Uh, we're going to determine the consistency here. And then I'm going to... Take a look at a large area on a leg, like right there, the calf, and then we're going to paint. Oh yeah, that looks good. Remember, if there's anything I want left black, I just paint around it. Shook a little bit there. Yep, just remember that you don't want to paint everything on the model. You want to leave some gaps. And what that does is makes those individual items that you didn't paint or you avoided painting completely it makes them pop out more. Just going to kind of show you a little bit what I'm talking about right there. With the leg, you got black lines still existing inside the leg, and that is just fine. 
switch to the left leg before I move on to more complicated areas of these legs. Even if that whole calf area is supposed to be tan, right? You still don't paint it all tan. You'll leave some lines between the major areas. So it has a little bit of black, which gives it a little bit of shadow or depth. It's visually, it enhances the model on the table. So it gives you kind of a black lined effect without actually black lining it. Another thing, if you make a mistake and you cover an item that you're not supposed to be covering, just have your black ready and when you're done with this color, go back and touch it up with some black. Turn it back into the prime color. The basin color. I mean the uh, prime priming color. That's what I meant. I'm working up the leg now. You gotta get your paint to the right consistency where it's going to cover the black and not leave paint lines. I know that's a little bit of a struggle sometimes but Okay, doing these missile pods on their legs, right? Um, you know, they fire like two missiles. Uh, they are very close together, right? So I don't paint the whole thing. I just paint the like tops, fronts, backs, and the outside edges. And the two inside edges that kind of are together, close together, they're, they both stay black. Because guess what? They're in shadow and... It'll just make them look better. You don't have to paint every single corner of the model is what I'm trying to get to yet. Normally I would use this technique with a secondary technique that, I'm, that I would use at the end which is called dipping which I dip the model in or actually I brush paint up this stuff on but it's called dipping. Um, in a polyurethane colored sealant. So let's say like a dirt colored sealant, like a, like a really dark brown, almost black. And then when I paint the whole model with this polyurethane, the polyurethane will drip. It'll drip down or off the model. And when it does, it leaves behind. Everything will be covered with polyurethane for sure. But in the cracks and crevices, you'll have this dark brown kind of a sealant. And it makes the whole model look a little dirty, which uh, is great for like my World War II models and my Napoleonic models and my American War of Independence models because they're out in the field and they're dirty. But if you want your model to look clean and bright and shiny or whatever, you do not use the dip technique. Uh, you'll just have to do another technique. Like ink washing. Which is kind of like what the dip technique is doing. It's doing an ink washing for you. And what it tends to do is it covers up any mistakes you might have made or indis you know, uh, where the model, of the paint that you're putting on the model don't fit exactly the way it's supposed to. That ink, when it settles, will cover your mistakes, basically. Okay, I've got all the way up to the hip. Now we're going to start with the 
And you're saying, Derek, I haven't seen you change brushes yet. Why do you have all four of those brushes out? Well, I haven't gotten to the part where I needed a fine tooth comb yet. I'm still using my big brush. My adult brush. All right, now I gotta do some repair work on this thing. We're gonna take some black and we're gonna put it in the lens here. Don't need a lot just to cover up the brown that I accidentally jumped in there with. That was me losing control of my paintbrush hand and I just accidentally touched it right onto the lens. done. 